Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Euphoria and its new expansion, Ignorance is Bliss. This is a dice worker placement game where we are living in a dystopia, but we don't really see it that way. We've kind of seen an opportunity to maybe make this dystopia work for us a little bit rather than form our own factions and things. So we're going to be manipulating those factions to meet our own ends, really. Now, the expansion does add a few new things, but if you are completely unfamiliar with Euphoria, I'm going to be explaining what I'm doing as I go along, so hopefully that won't matter and you'll get a good idea of the game. I'm playing a solo version of the game, which is a new element to the expansion. The original game didn't come with an Automa mode, but Automa Factory have done a really good job, I'll say up front, of uh, putting in these two Automa players that uh, we'll see, that will compete against me. And what else do I need to say? Oh, if you aren't a fan of handheld cameras, there's a static one, Hello Static Cameras, and I would recommend you turn on subtitles to the Klingon channel, so if I've made any mistakes, they'll be noted up there. But let's get started. So we are going to be trying to help build markets, help influence different factions, and try and get our 10 authority tokens out onto the board. These 10 stars, it's a race to get your 10 onto the board in various ways, which we'll see as we go along. I start off with two workers. These are people that I have kind of bent to my will. I have influenced to come and help me out. And I have a couple of recruits as well. Now, at the start of the game, I got dealt four, and I keep two of them. One goes face up and is active from the start of the game. One is face down. So I have got, and these are completely new decks to the expansion as well. That They aren't compatible. You either choose the new deck or the original deck, and that's the same for the market tiles as well. So I have Shahina the Digger, and at the end of any of my turns, I can pay a stone to gain a commodity card. And my face down one isn't in effect yet until we reach a certain point on either the alliance tracks or the tunnels. And it's, it's Euphorian. So it gets flipped over when either the Euphorian tunnel or the Euphorian track reaches the flip point. And usually when you get to the end of the Euphorian track, you'd put a star on your Euphorian workers. Steve the double agent doesn't quite work like that because he is masquerading as a Wastelander and a Subterranean. So he gets a star if Wastelander and Subterraneans get stars on them, which so he can have two on him. So that's a really good way I can get stars, which really works to my advantage because one of the Automas is a member of the Wasteland faction and will hopefully be trying to advance their interests and inadvertently help me out. So the human player goes first and you either need to place one of your workers on one of the various spots on the board or you need to retrieve some or all of your workers. At the start of the game, you're not going to retrieve anything, are you? So you can place your workers in a lot of different spaces. So there are these big spaces here for getting commodities. These are the resource generating places. There are little squares here with dashed lines that uh, involves bumping. You can put your dice there and someone else can bump you out and give you your dice back. And there are even some super secret spots on the board that we you can only get to if you have a recruit of that faction and you have to wait until the miner actually digs the tunnel for you to be able to reach that special space. Uh, the, a new change for the expansion, by the way, is these stickers have been placed on the tunnels and the miner starts in a different position depending on the number of players, which is a nice little change. So I need to decide what I want to do. Now, I want to advance the subterranean faction, and I want to have stone so I can get these commodity cards. So my first step towards doing that, I'm going to take my worker here. And the, the numbers on the workers represent their kind of intelligence, their awareness of what's going on around them. So a worker with a one value on isn't really, it's, it's kind of uh, blissfully ignorant. It's just quite apt to the expansion. And you do have the intelligence of your workers boosted by the number on your track here. Now, there is a track on the board, but everyone now has individual ones on these snazzy little player mats that are new to the expansion as well. So I have to kind of measure all the time. The total value of my workforce, the total intelligence, is seven. And I add three to that. If the total ever reaches or goes past 16, then one of my workers you know, realizes what's going on and leaves me basically, gets uh, gets too aware, doesn't like what's happening and goes away. So I want to make sure that doesn't happen as the game goes on. Anyway, I want to take 
a low value worker over here to the aquifer and get myself some water. This is the subterranean section of the map. So there are different sections according to the factions. So there's the subterraneans down here. There are the wastelanders over here, the euphorians over there, and the Icarites all the way in the sky. And they work quite similarly. Well, the, the, the first three do. They all have a place you can go to get resources, two markets waiting to be built, a place where you can put stars in the territory, and they have a tunnel as well. That's the exact same for these three different factions. The Icarites are a bit different because they have markets already built, you could say, but they're going to be the same every game. And they, they have their resource generating place and they have their place to put stars out. Anyway, though, back to the subterraneans. When you come to the resource generation places, this big square here means that any number of dice can go here. And when you've placed your die, you total all of the dice that are in this section and look at the corresponding column. So I've just put a one in there and there's nothing else. So we look at the one to four. I get myself one water and... I advance the subterranean allegiance track. The subterraneans are happy that I've sent a worker to be helping generate water. So we move along the allegiance track there and we will get special bonuses if we reach certain points on that track. So one more puts this token out that generates more and more water for people of the subterranean faction. And I grab myself one water that goes in my commodity section. There are different... There are different resources in this game, so the, the basic things, like the water, are commodities here. So there's energy, water, food, and bliss, and they apply to each of the different factions, and they are commodities. That's the symbol for any commodity there. There are also resources, gold, stone, and clay, that you get from going in the three tunnels, and they are resources rather than commodities. And so that's my whole turn. I took one of my workers, placed it in a worker placement spot and got the result, which in this case was one water and advancing the track one. So now we move on to the Automa players. Now this deck has been constructed according to a table in the rule book and you can adjust its difficulty as well. This is the intermediate difficulty, just the standard difficulty, but you can ramp it up if uh, you're finding that you're beating them too easily. So we start off with this support card out here, and this works a little bit similarly to the Gaia project. If you saw my video for that, Automa Factory also did the solo mode to that. So you draw a card for the start of the Automa's turn, and the cards together make a nice little box in the middle that shows you what the Automas are going to be doing this turn. So we don't need to worry about this column on the left or this column on the right. It's this box in the middle that's going to tell us what they're doing. So first up, there's a box here. Some cards will tell you to discard commodity cards from the display to kind of simulate the Automa players taking them. But they don't need commodity cards. They don't need resources. They get a lot of stuff for free. Uh, this is to do with Automa's retrieving workers. They won't do that until they have uh, gotten low on them. But now we go on to these boxes and the black section tells us what the black Automa is going to do. The white tells us what the white Automa is going to do. So black goes first. He is going to go to the commodity area. So the place we just went for the subterraneans to get the water. He's going to go to the commodity area for the faction that he supports. That's what that symbol means. The Automa's faction. So he is a wastelander, so he's going to go to the resource space for, well, the commodity space. I should make that clear. Commodity space for the wastelanders. Now, when they go to the commodity space, they always use their lowest value die. Every other action, they use their highest value. So he's going to take his one here, put it in the wastelanders territory. He doesn't get resources because he doesn't need them. But he does advance the Wastelanders, which is good for me because I want to get them all the way to the end. Because when my Euphorian double agent is revealed, he will get a star because the Wastelanders got advanced. So that's all he did. And the White Automa is going to go to the commodity space, not of his own faction, but of the Wastelanders again. So he comes over here. The total value is four now, still in the same column. So the Wastelanders get advanced again. And this doesn't really do anything for them. But if you had a member of the Wastelander faction as your recruit revealed, when you came to the farm in future, you would now get two food instead of just one. Okay, we've had the Automa's turns. Now the old support card goes away. And this is going to be the new support card. So we know 
a little bit of information. So they're not going to retrieve their workers because they've still got loads left. But they're going to be doing something in the Wastelander faction again. So this is this is completely random, shuffled up all of the green cards. And it just happens that the first two are both going to the Wastelander section because he happens to be a Wastelander and he's going to the Wastelander specifically. So they're really kind of collaborating to get that moved across. It's my turn though. I can retrieve my worker or I can go again. So I could try and get some more water. Now adding this six over here would put me in the second column, which would get me a water and would decrease the intelligence of my workers. You know, they're, they're working so hard, they haven't got time to think about my, uh, my evil plans. I could also come over here to the tunnel, which would cost me a water, but would get me a stone or a commodity card. And it moves the, it advances the miner down the tunnel to reveal a special action space for me. I do have to be thinking though about, not, not so much right now, I do have to be thinking about how I'm gonna get that Euphorian revealed because so far it's not looking like the Automas are gonna be very interested in advancing this track and it's a long way to go on your own or I need to really make use of that Euphorian tunnel so that the miner will go to that reveal space. I think for now though, I'm going to keep gathering resources. I'm gonna come over to the aquifer again because I can use this to get the stone that I do need and will be useful for building markets as well as getting the commodity cards. But also the worker activation tank here, I can get some more workers. If I can spend three energy or three water, I can get myself another worker. That does present a bit of a risk though, because the more workers you have, if they are all brought back, the more chance you've got of going over that 16 limit and losing them. So I've gone there, I get myself one more water and we lower the intelligence of my workforce. Automus turn again. So we flip this. No cards are getting changed in the display. And we go over here. Now this means he either goes to the tunnel of, his, of the faction that he's going to, or if he's going to the Icarites, they don't have a tunnel, he would go to a certain space in there instead. And it would be the Sky Lounge because you can see the, the symbols match there of what you get from that space. His faction happens to be the Wastelanders though, so he's going to take his highest value die and go to the Wastelander Tunnel. And you know, this is doing a pretty good job so far of what a player might do, you know, coming here, getting food, spending that food to get a brick or something. But remember, Automas don't need any resources. All he does here is, you know, block the space off, although you can go there and bump him but he does advance the minor one space as well. And we've already seen what the white Automa is going to do. He's going to take his lowest value die and go to the commodity space for the Wastelanders again. Back to me, and I have no workers, so my only option is to retrieve any or all of your workers. Now, if I grab the key card here, this uh, gives us a little rundown of my options. I can spend a food or a bliss to increase the morale by two, which is my hand size for those commodity cards. Or I can pay nothing and the morale of the workers will go down. As it happens though, the, I don't have those resources to spend for a start, but even if I did, my morale is as low as it could go. So I, I have nothing to lose really. So I'm not gonna pay anything, mainly because I can't, and uh, I don't have to lose any morale. Now it's up to me, I can bring both of them back or leave one out if I want to, but I think, as it is, I can't go over 16 with just two workers, so I'm going to bring them both back, and when you retrieve them, you roll them, unless you have some kind of power that says you don't have to. Now, I've rolled very low there, which is good for resource spaces, but also, even better, I could go twice. Now... There's a reason that I can't. Uh, this, this is a bit of a change for the expansion, I believe. In the original game, if you rolled doubles, or three of a kind, or four of a kind, you could take turns in a row. You can still do that in the expansion, but for every extra turn you take, you have to lose a morale. So if you don't have morale to lose, you can't take extra turns in a row. So that's all I did. That's my whole turn, is retrieving workers. So we go to the Automas again. So we know they're going to be doing something in the Euphorian faction and the Icarite faction. So let's see what it is. They don't get rid of any cards. Now this is either another Icarite space or the tunnel, depending on the faction they're going to. This is going to be the Euphorian tunnel, which I'm quite happy with because I want that Euphorian tunnel excavated so I can reveal my recruit. 
So we take his highest value die, pop it in the tunnel there, and advance the miner. Oh, knock him over, and then advance him one step. And the white Autumn, quite obsessed with gathering resources, but this time he's going to go over to the Icarites rather than the Wastelanders, his own faction. Unfortunately, he's going there with a five, which means he doesn't advance his Icarite faction. And, you know, he, has, he doesn't get resources and he doesn't have intelligence or morale. They are Automas after all. So now it's back to me. As I said, I don't have morale, so I can't go twice in a row, which is a bit of a shame. I was going to do something different. I was going to start doing tunnels, but I think because I've got such low numbers, I might just keep going for the aquifer, which isn't really getting me too much. It's just loads of water. Although I could use all of this water to get more workers, and oh, that's an idea. I'm going to come here anyway. Be a bit boring, not really show you anything uh, different yet. I promise I'll do something different soon. Uh, but the Automas are hopefully doing different things. Uh, so I'm getting a water and advancing the faction one more space. Because now, when I come to the aquifer, and I do have a subterranean recruit revealed, when I come to the aquifer, I get one extra water, in addition to what it already says. Automa time, and what are they doing? So, this is where there is a little change. When they go to either the commodity space, or, you know, the tunnel stroke Icarite action space, and they only have one worker left, they retrieve their workers. If they were doing another action, and we'll see some of their other actions later on, they would be able to place that dice. But just for those two actions, they retrieve workers instead. Now, there is no A in that box, so they just retrieve all of their workers. If there was that A in the box, they would leave their highest value die that's in a generating space that's not of their faction you know so that it's harder for the other player or the other automa maybe to get the advancement for that faction so all that's happening this turn is that they are both retrieving all of their workers and they get re-rolled okay it's back to me then and i think i'm gonna have a little diversion i would like to keep advancing their track but i'm going to have a little diversion and go to the worker activation tank i'm going to spend the three water that i've gathered so far i'm going to get myself two morale and a new worker which gets rolled right now so what's it going to be hopefully low six that's unfortunate so i've spent all of that water and so next turn i don't have to retrieve workers because i have a new one to spend automa they are going to go to the commodity spaces Black is going to send his lowest value to the subterraneans where I am. So it may have been, you know, I've, I've missed my opportunity now to send my one there and advance it again. But they're actually advancing it for me, so it's not too bad. Uh, and the white automa is going to the commodities for Icarites. So now they're sending a low value die there. They can advance the Icarites to their first spot. And that's actually the last card in the automa deck. So for their next turn their deck is going to change somewhat. But we'll see that in a minute. My turn. I have a six now. So I could go here and then have nine, couldn't I? Yes, it would be nine. So I would get three water for one action. Downside, though, the intelligence of my workers would go up. You know, there's too many workers here. There's too much gossip. There's, uh, there's too much telling each other what they've seen. And, yeah, they get a bit wiser. Or I could, I can't go to the tunnels. I could try working on maybe the Euphorian. So if I got some energy, then I could start going to the tunnels. I think though, yeah, at the risk of increasing intelligence, I am going to grab three water because that's probably going to sort me out for a little while, isn't it? And my intelligence goes back up there. So for the Automas... They have gone through their deck, so we need to collect together all of the cards from it. And we have two add-on decks. Now, they are identical in terms of the colors of cards for the intermediate difficulty anyway, so it didn't matter which one I grabbed. So I take this add-on deck, everything that was in the original deck, shuffle them together. Then we draw one as the starting support card, and then just go as normal. So now... The add-on decks contain cards from different colors of Automa decks that contain different actions. So they are, you know, to represent the way that the game goes, they are now going to start 
you know, building markets and getting involved in more than just commodities and things like that. So let's see what they're doing. So first up, we've got a green card, which is, you know, one of the base cards and the new pink card. So if this had been the action rather than the support, they would be doing some building for sure. But as it happens, they the, the Black Automa is going to be going to the Tunnel of the Subterraneans, which uh, I, I don't mind either way, really. So he advances the minor one step there. And the White Automa, <laughs> commodity crazy, is going to go up to the Icarites again. And nothing happens. He doesn't advance the Allegiance because the values of the dice are too high. Speaking of dice, I've run out of them. And so... I need to retrieve. I don't have resources to be able to spend again. Oh, I never increased my morale, did I? That will be a subtitle. Uh, but it's about to go back down. So I'm going to retrieve. I'm just going to retrieve two of them. I don't trust myself retrieving all three, I don't think. I bet I'd just roll three sixes. Or should we risk it? No, let's not risk it. Let's just bring two of them back. And I want the value of this to go back down low, so... Even though I, I don't think the Automas go to the worker retrieval at all because they start off with all of their workers. So it's not like I'm going to get bumped out of there. But I'm going to bring these two back. And so I roll them. So eight. Yeah, I think I could have. Eleven. As long as I got a five or lower on the other dice, I could have taken the extra one back. But I didn't. I went. I played it safe, which I may live to regret. So the Automas go now because I spent my turn retrieving. Let's see, they're going to go in the Euphorian Tunnel and advance that minor another step. And <laughs> come on, White Autumn, you need to do different things. He's going to go to the Icarite's uh, commodities again. Now, I think since the Autumn may be getting involved in building, it would be nice for me to have resources. The building of the markets only uses resources, not commodities. The thing that holds me back a bit, and this is true in a multiplayer game as well, if I come over here to spend my water to get some stone, I bump the Automa, and we re-roll this dice, and he gets another turn before he has to you know, spend his whole turn retrieving workers. So maybe I want to wait and see if he retrieves this turn, but maybe they're going to start building on markets, and I'm going to be really behind if I'd wait. I am going to wait, though, and advance the subterraneans one more time. So oh, I've, all I've done this game is get water and a new worker so far. But hey, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that they are not going to build and they're just going to retrieve their workers. Yes, they are, because they are both getting commodities. And if they try and get commodities with only one worker, they retrieve. They don't leave any out because they haven't got an A in that box. So yeah, that's just all that happens, which works out very well for me. Oh, I should also have an extra water, shouldn't I? I get two water whenever I should normally get one. Anyway, on to my turn. The tunnel is now free, so I'm going to come over here. And it's a, it's a bit unfortunate. We're not one more step over. When this power is unlocked, and it's true for the other two factions as well, when this power is unlocked, if you have a, an active recruit of this faction, when you come to the tunnel, you don't have to choose between the resource or the card. You can have both. So yeah, I, I can't advance it though with the numbers that I've got at the moment. So we just come over here. I'm going to choose to get the stone. And we advance the miner one more space. On the Automus turn, they are going to be, oh, discarding a card for once. Now I should mention the display here, the bazaar a little bit, which is a new addition for the expansion. Rather than just drawing from the deck of commodity cards, we now have a little display and you can have the one on the right for free when you get a card or you can pay commodities to get the card that you need if it's further along and they slide as they get taken so the card here is telling us to take the second card away the second from the right so we remove that then the other cards slide down and we refill on the left and there we go so artifacts from the past there from the good old days of teddy bears and baseball bats now on to their turns though. So Black is going to go to the commodity space of the Wastelanders and advance their interests one more step. And the White is going to do a brand new action. And this is going to require, I think I'll get the rulebook. And the reason I do that is there is a player aid that has this all in a concise manner, but it, it's better for when you know 
what, uh, what, what it means rather than your first introduction to it. So he's doing the construct or constructed market action. And you start at the top of this table and work your way down until you get to an action that he can do. So, first of all, are there spaces on construction sites where there's already a worker? All of the market construction sites are completely empty. So no, that's not true. Okay, so the top row's out. So we move down. Are there spaces on construction sites where there are no workers? Yes. And which one do they pick? Well, it, there's a tiebreaker system. So they would first go to their faction, which is the Icarites for the White Automa. Unfortunately, the Icarites don't have any markets to construct. So we go clockwise. So they go to the Wastelanders next and they pick the bottom most space. So they send their highest value worker for everything but commodities. They don't need any resources and things. This would normally take a brick and their worker goes there. In a two or three player game, and this counts as a three player game, me and two Automas, the markets are constructed when any two spaces are filled. So I need to get in gear if I want to be involved in this market because there are penalties for not going on there. It's back to me then. And unfortunately for me, I don't have bricks. And yeah, unless, unless the cards come out in such a way that the construction action has maybe Euphorian or Subterranean next to it, chances are the Automa is going to help build the one that's already under construction there. Because that's his faction. It, it all depends how the cards come out, but I have a feeling that I'm going to be left out of that unless I do something. I don't have any workers, though, so really, <laughs> it's, it's not down to me. I think I'm going to be brave and retrieve all of my workers. And let's see what I get. Hopefully not over the limit. I get 1, 4, 10, 13. That's okay. It's not 16 or more, so I can keep all of those. Unfortunately, that's my whole turn, though. Moving on to the Automus. Ah, I get a little bit of a breather because the Black Automa is going to the Wastelander resource space. The White Automa is going to the Icarite space. And nothing happens at Wastelanders, but the Icarite Allegiance gets advanced and the Cloud Mind's power is unlocked. Now over to me. Do I stop what I was doing and go and get some food, and then hope to turn it into a brick. That's three turns, though. Get food, turn it into a brick, then get on that market. Or similarly, I can get energy, get gold, go on that market, which may be better because then I would advance the Euphorian Tunnel. Hmm. It's not brilliant either way, is it? I think that I don't, I don't want to possibly advance the Wastelanders or anything, though. I'm going to come over to... Yeah, I'm going to come over to the Euphorians. I'm going to send my one there. I'm going to get myself some energy. This may all be for nothing because the next card could just be construction. I need three turns to get my plan in action, really. And I could get another worker if I wanted to. Okay, the Automans, what are they going to do? Uh, they are going to go to the commodity area for the Subterraneans. So that's a four. Helps me out a little bit there. And the subterranean tunnel is unlocked, so when I come here for my stone, I can take a card as well. I don't have to choose. White Automa is going in the... Ooh, what's that one called? It's the Breeze Bar. He takes his high... Oh, they're the same value. Breeze Bar of his faction, because his faction is the Icarites. So he comes up here. He doesn't spend anything, get anything, but he does advance the Allegiance track. One more step there. Back to me. I'm going to go on the Euphorian Tunnel and turn in my one energy for a gold. And oh, I, sh I should mention, by the way, that these resources are special. These are the realistic resources. Stonemaier do sell these in packs now, but this is the, kick the original Kickstarter version of Euphoria. And so I believe later versions come with wooden components. So yeah, just in case you get a copy and wonder why it's not exactly like this. So we need to advance the miner one step as well. And you know, I could get bumped from there and get my worker back, which would be very good for me. So I'm one turn away from being able to go on that market. So don't do it, Automus. 
So what are we doing? Yes, getting commodities. That is fine by me. So, oh no, they don't do it either. They only have one die left each. And they do have that symbol. So they're going to leave behind their highest value die on a commodity space that isn't their faction. So for the Black Automer, he is on the Wastelander, which is his faction. So he brings those back. But he's on the Aquifer. So he's going to go there and basically stop me from being able to advance the Allegiance by going there. But it does leave him with one fewer die as well. Uh, the White Automer is not on any foreign <laughs> commodity spaces, shall we say. Oh, I'm about to make a mistake. They never retrieve workers from construction sites because that would just be a waste, wouldn't it? So thankfully, it's worked out well for me because I have a worker left and I have a gold. I'm going to come over here to this market in construction. In a three-player game, only two of them need to be filled. So, oh, I need to spend the gold, by the way. I don't get to keep that. And so the market gets built. It slides over, conveniently knocking our workers off and giving them back to us. And so this gets flipped over and we have built the Bureau of Restricted Tourism. And if, say, I had been left off here, any human player that gets left off has a penalty now. So you can't place workers if you have two or more on the board. That would be really restrictive if you'd gone for a load of workers. For the Automas, though, let's see, the, the people that contributed, so the White Automa and myself, get a star on there. So that is our first star, I believe, isn't it? We are both one-tenth of the way towards winning, although it accelerates. It's a race. It ramps up as it goes along. Especially, you know, there is, as soon as a market gets one resource on it, there's always a mad dash to be included on there and not get the penalty. The Black Automa does not put his star on there because he didn't help build it, and he gets a penalty. For as long as he has that penalty, and that stays until he gets a star on there, whenever he rolls a six, it goes on there and doesn't count as his worker. He does get to retrieve it later, and the six he's already rolled doesn't automatically go on there. This market is now a new space that we can go to. You need to spend artifact cards. So we need the books there and a brick, you know, the resource brick. And you put your die there. You get to put a star in the Wastelander territory and you advance the Wastelander faction. You can also get it there by spending either three artifact cards that are anything or two of a kind. And then you will advance the Wastelander faction and get a star. You can also use this space to get a star on a market that you didn't contribute to, a market you're being penalized for. Now, the Automas don't need to do that, but a little change for the expansion is that you could come here. So if, if uh, Black was a human player, he could come here with the normal resources and get to put a star on the market that he's penalized from. So I'd say all in all, that was a very good turn. What are the Automas going to do now? <laughs> the Black Automa is going to do some construction. So I got there just in time. He's going to construct in his faction. That would have been that Wastelander space. So the, the flowchart that we've seen so far. So are there markets under construction? No. Are there unconstructed markets? Yes, there are. There's plenty. He goes to his faction. So he starts with the Wastelander. Is there an unconstructed market in the Wastelander faction? Yes, there is. He comes over here. The White Automa goes to the commodity space for the Wastelanders and advances their allegiance one space. It comes back to me. This couldn't have worked out much better for me, really. Very conveniently, I have a worker. I have a stone. This market wants a stone. I'm going to come all the way up here, spend my last resource. And we do the same thing, except now it's white being left out. So we get these workers back. Hopefully he rolls a six and gets the dice taken off him. Yes, he did. Brilliant. So I get a two. Slide those along. We put our stars on them. So at the moment, I'm winning. I've got two of my stars out onto the board. And there we have the, uh, the Athenaeum of Mandatory Guidelines. You can have a teddy bear card and a gold resource to activate the market itself. And if you were a human player, your penalty would be, when placing a star, lose morale. And so now we need to flip the white Automus card to its penalty side as well, because he isn't on a faction. 
So I think we've got, we've shown a lot of stuff. There's still some stuff to be seen later on, like putting the stars in the territories and actually collecting the cards and using them. But if you would like to see that, then I will make a part two video and you can carry on watching all the way to the end of the game. If you've seen enough and you want to know what I think, then that will be linked over here as well. It's up to you really. But thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you for whichever next one you choose.